subscribe to my channel and press bell icon for latest updates. Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about Receiver Operating Characteristics Curve. So, for understanding of this class, we will use some of the concepts which we have already discussed in our previous classes. Uh, our assumption here is you have already watched all those classes. Uh, so please follow our playlist for better understanding of the subjects. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. So what we do here is uh, first we will refresh the concepts which we discussed in our previous classes, uh, the problems with uh, imbalanced data sets and confusion matrix class. Uh, then we will discuss about how to plot this receiver operating characteristics curve. Then we will go and discuss about why we are using this plotting ROC curve and what's the use of this and how it is helpful in imbalanced data sets. So now let's take an example and understand what's ROC curve using an example. The example which we consider here is the same example which we considered in our previous class that is a confusion matrix class credit card fraud detection data sets here the input is the transaction details we are taking 100 transactions out of that 90 are positive transactions and 10 are negative transactions one is taken as positive transaction zero is taken as negative transaction positive means genuine transaction negative means fake transaction this is what our data set is so we already discussed about how to plot confusion matrix for this this is the actual values 0 and 1 these are predicted values 0 and 1 so 90 actual values 90 positive values are there out and 10 negative values are there so what we need to understand here is a true positive rate means out of total 90 actual positive points how many of them we have predicted as our model has predicted as positive 80 so 80 divided by 90 means we are calculating here percentage of points based on actual positive points means percentage calculation means our tpr value will be between 0 and 1 the same way we are calculating f false positive rate is equal to out of total negative points total how many negative actual negative points 10 how many are predicted as a false positive 4 as predicted as false positive so we are calculating percentage fpr means a false positive rate value is also in percentages means the value is between 0 and 1 and one more important point you have to understand here is out of total 10 negative points actual negative points our model has predicted 4 as a positive means 6 as negative so the percentage this is 20 percent means this is 80 percent this is 10 percent means this is 90 percent that's why we got this formula true negative rate is equal to 1 minus false positive rate all these equations we use here for understanding that's why we are refreshing the concepts the all these are discussed in our previous class so coming to our what's actual uh, receiver operating characteristics curve first we will understand how to plot this then we will understand uh, what's the use of this then why we are using it for imbalanced data sets so now let's take this uh, data set and this data set is given as input for model 1 m1 model so what our model is doing here is our model is predicting probability values how our model will predict this probability values we will discuss this when we discuss about the models okay for now assume that our model is predicting probability values what's the meaning of this probability value is take the first input our model has predicted a probability value of 0.94 what's that mean is 94 percent of the chances this first data point will be one take the second data point our model predicted is 0.68 means 68 percent of the chances is being the value 1 that is what probability values means so what what we are doing here take the data set we are applying this data set to the model m1 model our model is predicting probability values 
so we will take this probability values here or oh, this is our model this is our probability values but we are taking this probability values in descending order okay we can we change these values to descending order so what we do here is just follow what we are doing we will understand why we are doing all this by the end of the class we will get a clear clarity of each and every concept just follow what we are doing here so what we do here is take the first one 0.96 probability as a threshold value t1 what's this mean is equal to this probability value and above this probability value we will consider it as a value 1 means our our model will predict equal to this value and above this value is predicted as positive point remaining all are negative points so t1 has taken 0.96 as probability value and equal to this and above this is considered as a positive point so our value is 1 and remaining all are zeros the same way the second one threshold value is taken as t2 threshold value is taken as 0.94 means equal to this and above is considered as positive points and remaining all negative points 1 1 and remaining all are negative points so at t1 we are having actual values and we are having we are having actual values we are having predicted values so if we are having actual and predicted values we can plot a confusion matrix so plot confusion matrix for t1 and then calculate true positive rate and false positive rate same thing take the t2 plot the confusion matrix and calculate true positive rate and false positive rate next take third probability as a threshold value okay and uh, above this and e equal to this and above this is considered as positive points so 1 1 1 and remaining as a negative points uh, calculate true positive rate and false positive rate for uh, this threshold value do this for entire probability values so all the probability values next take the fourth one fifth one sixth one till how many points we have thousand hundred points we have so do it for all the values and calculate true positive rate and false positive rate for all the threshold values then what we have to do is we will plot this true positive rate and false positive rate values so our receiver operating characteristics curve is based on false positive rate and true positive rate fpr is taken in x axis tpr is taken in y axis so the fpr value is between 0 and 1 tpr value is between 0 and 1 so the, the total area is 1 simple mathematics length is 1 breadth is 1 total area will be length into breadth it is 1 okay how we plot is plot the fpr and tpr values of all these threshold values and we got a curve like this m1 this blue line is the curve we got for first model m1 model we plotted so please follow we will get clarity by the end of the class now what we do is we will take second model m2 model so for the second model give this data set as input to this model and repeat the same process we will get some probability values arrange those probability values in descending order and calculate t1 t2 t so on and calculate tpr and fpr for all the values and plot the plot it here on the T fpr and tpr value we got a new curve called m2 now what we have to do is you we have to identify the calculate the area between this roc curve so area under roc curve we call it as auc so we calculate auc for m1 and m2 for m1 we are having 0.6 for m2 we are having 0.8 now we applied the same data set on two models m1 and m2 which model we have to consider here we will consider m2 as the best model means accuracy depends on auc auc is taken as accuracy here why we are taking auc as accuracy why we are taking a highest accuracy AUC value as best model now let's understand why 
see here when we will get the highest AUC between this curve for suppose take the FPR and TPR values we are plotting FPR and TPR values for a least FPR value means for least FPR value if we are having highest true positive rate then our curve will be like this clearly understand for least false positive rate if you are having highest true positive rate then the area under this curve will be highest for least FPR if you are having highest TPR for least FPR if you are having highest TPR our curve will be like this then we will have highest AUC okay that's why we are taking highest AUC as best accuracy why means least FPR means how we calculate true negative rate least FPR means 1 minus least we will get highest TNR value means AUC depends on two values it is dependent on true negative rate and true positive rate so AUC depends on two values it is dependent on true negative rate and true positive rate that's why we are considering highest because we clearly discussed in our previous class imbalanced data set there we took an example example model we are having 95 positive classes positive points and five negative points there we took a dumb model dumb model always predicting positive but we are getting 95 percent accuracy but the model is not at all concerned about minority class that's the problem we discussed in imbalanced data sets so please go back and check it once again so there the model is not at all concerned about a minority class even it is getting 95 percent accuracy but AUC depend on TNR and TPR means here it is considering both positive majority class and minority class into consideration that's why we use this for imbalanced data sets and one more point we have to understand here is we will also calculate at which threshold value we are having highest F false positive rate and true positive rate means we'll take t1 true positive rate and false positive rate like that multiply with the highest of TPR into 1 minus FPR 1 minus FPR means automatically it is a true negative rate at which threshold value we are getting this multiplication of this highest value at which threshold value we are getting this highest this total highest value we will take that thre threshold value into consideration for suppose at T6 we are getting it we will take this threshold value and we will use it for displaying our confusion matrix okay we will use this threshold value okay all these concepts are theoretically explained here all these concepts are clearly implemented and will draw the confusion matrix and will find the area under this curve and we will find the threshold values everything is implemented when we discuss our models and when we are implementing our models okay so it is very difficult to understand initially but watch it again and again till you get the concept uh, this is very very important concept to understand in machine learning hope you understand the class if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you